Across from the baseball stadium on Douglas Avenue, in front of VFW Post 2550, a new memorial has been installed in the form of a tank that represents 16 tons of hometown history. A workhorse of the Allied campaign in World War II, the landing vehicle tract, the LVT, the Roebling Alligator, the Amtrak, whatever it was called, was first manufactured right here in Dunedin and represents a dynamic time in the city that you may not know about but need to appreciate. The Alligator Tank has an interesting history. Donald Roebling, whose family goes way back into the construction of bridges, Roebling family actually built the Brooklyn Bridge. They were in that kind of business and had quite a bit of money. Donald himself was an engineer and mechanic and he loved to do inventions. And Donald in the late 30s thought of doing something because he lived here in Florida about using it as a rescue material to go and get people who were stranded on islands with waterlogged areas that couldn't get out or evacuate. So he tried to think of a tank or an amphibious machine that would help rescue these people. So the military caught on to the idea of what Roebling was doing with this tank and they came down to Clearwater, Florida at his home and wanted to talk to him about his invention and what they had an idea of use for it. And when Roebling found out that the military had an interest, he, being very patriotic, decided to give the patent and the rights and the design of the tank over to the military. And with his expertise and his knowledge of what he already knew about the Alligator Tank, they perfected it, modified it so that it could be a military vehicle to be used in the Pacific, uh, mainly for the islands around the Philippines and everything to have the Marines get an easier access to the islands. The Navy and the Marines notified Roebling that they definitely were interested in this project. Uh, Roebling said that he was working here in the Clearwater area, so they were willing to re relocate some of their officers here to work with Roebling on the project. And initially, they were based uh, in the old Dunedin Hotel, which is where the Edgewater Arms is today. So most of the officers were staying there to work with Roebling. And when the agreement was made that the original roughly 200 alligator tanks would be produced here through the food manufacturing company that was used by Skinner for using for materials for concentrate, uh, they decided that they needed to have more Marines here, one to learn how to maneuver these tanks. So right today, which is known as Harbor Villas or closer to Palm Drive, which is across from the golf course, the Marines borrowed the land from Mr. Skinner and actually built a military barracks to hold the Marines there to train them. And as they were training, uh, more and more tanks were being built at that time and they were being tested right here in Dunedin because they needed more of those tanks to have Marines able to learn how to drive these things in land and in water. So they would actually practice off the Dunedin Isles area and and actually send them over to Honeymoon Island to train them to land on, on islands that were in the uh, area. Originally, Dunedin had made three original tanks and after that, moving it over to the food manufacturing company here in Dunedin, roughly about 200 were made actually in Dunedin. The LVT helped provide jobs and patriotic pride in Dunedin. And as the tanks left town during the war, an invasion of servicemen involved in training with the Roebling Alligator came into the area, providing an influx of activity and excitement. The Marines came to town, and that made them all the difference in the world. And they took over Dunedin, and uh, uh, most of the young officers got apartments or a house, and uh, the others uh, had a barracks, I guess they call it, in the hotel. Every Sunday afternoon, the Fenway Hotel in Dunedin was a place to go. And the girls would invite people on a date, and we'd go to, uh, to the Fenway for that e evening. And I met my husband on a blind date. Several of the girls here, local girls, married the Marines that they met during the war. Other than uh, uh, the Marines in town, I don't remember too much except when some were leaving, they were getting ready to leave, and they were 
boarding the train, and all of Dunedin must have turned out to say goodbye and wish them well and good luck. And uh, they all brought things. They brought fried chicken, they brought money, they brought liquor, they brought all kinds of things, thinking these boys were all their way to war, when actually they were going to uh, Cap Lejeune, New River, North Carolina, for more training. And that's where my husband, that's where he left from when he went overseas, went to the South Pacific. And he, he was helping train the, uh, and getting, getting to know the, the you know, Amtraks, they call them. And they would take them up to uh, St. Joseph Sound. That was all vacant land. There's nothing but houses now. And that's where they would take the tractors off uh, to, to uh, operate them and to try them out, really, uh, out in the, the water. Oh, well, that's on the, uh, the west side of uh, Bayshore Boulevard. And so that's where I remember them going to uh, try out the tracks. Now, there's an LVT parked in front of the VFW on Douglas, a result of an effort to bring a symbol of this important area history back to Dunedin, and as a memorial of pride and respect for our city's veterans. I started off with the Dunedin LVT Preservation Group, and our effort was finally into discovering about this vehicle and, and, the, and the tremendous history that it had here in Dunedin, and we decided we needed to try to find one. Uh, they were built basically uh, in 1940. They started in 1940. The first ones were really delivered to the Marine Corps uh, in August of 1941. And the last ones were really produced like in 1945. So it was in that time period uh, that we were attempting to find a vehicle that still remained difficult. Most of these vehicles ended up overseas, some in Europe and, uh, and some in Japan. Uh, and Japan held uh, islands and some of the islands that were being contested. The LVT really represents the spirit of Dunedin. It represents the spirit of American ingenuity. A lot of Dunedin folks worked on this vehicle back then. Some of their families still live here. Uh, but this really represents to the World War II veteran uh, sort of like a monument, sort of like what, what really happened back in those days. It's just a tremendous history uh, for Dunedin. It, it lets the veteran have a, have a vehicle that they can look at and just kind of remember without really having to talk about it very much or that it just represents or that we care enough to have that vehicle back here. Even though the refurbished LVT arrived back in Dunedin in late May, a dedication ceremony was held in early July. It is an honor for the VFW to have this vehicle uh, on our property. I would like to officially dedicate this LVT-4 to all the World War II veterans, the world's greatest generation. The VFW, the Zachary L. Shannon Memorial Post, is extremely thankful to, to have the honor for this to be its final resting place. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything more. This is my second year as the commander of the post, and uh, I'm extremely proud of all the members for everything that they've done to help contribute to bringing it here. I'm thankful for the city for everything they've done. All their help has been extremely instrumental. Thankful to Pinellas County Sheriff's Department for escorting the LVT here, escorting the Marines. I mean, you couldn't ask anything more from a city or its citizens. And uh, the city of Dunedin in 1946 dedicated or gave this building to the World War II veterans that is now the VFW, you can't ask for a better city to be in. Even though Dunedin, with a population of roughly 1,500, uh, you think of it as a small community, it was amazing to the fact that Dunedin contributed so much to the war effort, one with Donald Roebling and the production of the Alligator Tank, two with so many Marines here in Dunedin, and three, that the concentrate plant was producing in America the largest amount of concentrate at the time. It, it seems strange that a town that we look at today is so quiet and just kind of peaceful, but that all that was going on in one place and held a major part of history in World War II. 
Learn more about our city's contribution to World War II. Visit the Dunedin Historical Museum on Main Street and check out their exhibit on the LVT and the rest of the city's war effort. And stop by the VFW on Douglas Avenue to see the LVT for yourself and take a moment to appreciate our hometown history.